<laughs> I won! Clap for me! Yay! Hey! Greetings everyone! With only three more weeks left of Hollow Scream, I'm back with another tips video. Hollow Scream at SeaWorld San Antonio is one of our favorite Halloween events of the year. We say this because it is what got us into Halloween events at theme parks, as we visited back in 2021 and were instantly hooked. Just to quickly run down SeaWorld San Antonio's Hollow Scream, there are six haunted houses, eight territories, five theme bars, and one current show in Monster Stomp that they perform twice a night. There is also a live band that performs at the Till Death Do Us Party territory, but I'm not sure of the times that they play. But here are 10 tips to help you at SeaWorld San Antonio's Hollow Scream. So originally I wrote this weeks ago, so I'm going to throw this tip in here as tip number zero, the Bay of Play area. The previously named Bay of Play Kids area is undergoing a retheming and construction, so that area is completely closed off with something coming in 2025, so just be aware of that. Tip number one, admission. Unlike the other SeaWorld parks, SeaWorld San Antonio's Hollow Scream is included with your park admission, so any pass member or daytime ticket holder can get into any of the houses and experience the scares, which we love, but because of this, the lines can get long. Just a quick note, the price of a ticket plus parking is close to a season pass, and SeaWorld has sales all the time, so purchasing a season pass may be worth it if you plan on visiting another time during the year. Tip number two, dates and times. Hall Scream is only on the weekends until October 27th and starts at 7 p.m. and runs until 10 p.m. Friday and Sunday and 11 p.m. on Saturdays. Tip number three, when should you visit? Just like Fright Fest, Saturdays will be the busiest time for Hollow Scream, and will definitely have the longest lines. Also to add on to this, each year we've gone, we've noticed they send people in groups of 8 or 10 into houses at a time, and wait about a minute before sending in the next group. Tip number 4, are the fear passes worth it? If you're just visiting for the day, I would highly consider it, especially on a Saturday. Last year I will say we did wait about an hour and a half for disassembly line once, and as much as we love these houses, I'm not sure I would say that that wait time is worth it. Now they do sell single use fear passes or front of the line passes. Usually it's about $10, but it's possible it may go up depending on the day. Tip number five, boo necklaces. If you don't think you can handle the scares in the territories, you can get a boo necklace that lights up that should deter the scare actors from going after you. Now these can be purchased for $15 at most of the shops at SeaWorld, but note, you are not allowed to go into the houses with them. Tip number six, hydrate. As I always emphasize in my videos, drink water as though all of the event will be at night. You will still be doing a lot of walking, standing in lines, and if starting at 7 p.m. it'll still be hot, plus there'll still be humidity throughout the night. Now at any of the drink stations, you should be able to get water there if you've brought in your own bottle. But if you have forgotten your bottle, if you go up to the ambassador and just ask them for a cup for water, they should provide you a clear cup to get water from the drink station. Tip number seven. Plan to walk. SeaWorld San Antonio is a good sized park. It is roughly a mile to walk the whole Hollow Scream path. And on top of that, you'll be walking through houses and standing in lines. So you will be on your feet a lot. So good shoes will go a long way. Also to add on to this tip, be careful when walking through the zombie horde as it is mostly a dirt pathway. Tip number eight, earplugs. Now it wouldn't be a bad idea to wear some type of ear dampening plugs for a disassembly line as that is one of the loudest houses that I've been through at SeaWorld San Antonio. It also seems to dampen out the scares so if you're someone who's more jumpy it might also be worth wearing ear dampening plugs. Tip number nine, shows. If you can, try to catch Monster Stomp as it is always a favorite of ours. I can't exactly remember the show times. I know they're different from Friday and Sunday are different times than what is on Saturday night. But nevertheless, it is a great show. And if you can, catch the band that plays at Till Death Do Us Party. And tip number 10, I said this in my previous video and I'll say it again. 
respect the scare actors. To reiterate, the rule is do not touch the scare actors and the scare actors will not touch you. The scare actors are what make these Halloween events fun and enjoyable, and they're doing this despite what the weather is, and each weekend dealing with huge crowds. The actors may run up to you and scare you, and may even accidentally bump into you if the area is crowded, but please treat them with respect, and do not push, kick, punch, or get in their faces. Please, they are just trying to do their job and make this Halloween event as fun as possible. That's all the tips I have for you guys. If you found it helpful, please give this video a like. Now, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments section, and I'll try to get back to them as soon as I can. I just want to give a shout out to all the scare actors at both parks, SeaWorld San Antonio and Six Flags Fiesta Texas. Y'all are doing a great job. You've scared me quite a few times already, and I'll be so sad once the Halloween season is over. Just want to jump in and say, if you made it this far in the video, thank you so much. Um, hope you found these tips helpful. And until next time, see ya! I gotta head home now. But I wanna play... TAGGER! <laughs>